Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more Let's Play New Super Mario Bros. Uh, very quickly, um, I had a little problem with my uh, save data. And as you can see, um, there's a lot of stuff that I actually don't have completed here. But I actually do have another file that's caught up to where I should be after the content for this video. So I'm going to do everything I can in this video to get caught up. And then in the next video, I should be right back to where I was with everything gotten. So, uh, all these missing star coins that I have gotten before should be gotten again. So don't worry about that. Anyway, uh, there is actually a secret exit here in 2-4. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab this. Uh, you do have to be mini Mario in order to get to this exit. So, uh, try to manipulate a red block to appear here, or you have to go back to another level and find it. Uh, one good level where you can find Mini Mario is 1-4. Uh, that's probably the level I'll go back to the most to get this power up, just because it's there very close to the beginning, and it's not a very long level either, so that is probably the best place to get Mini Mario, just in my own personal opinion. But right here, you actually can go this way and go inside this pipe, and this pipe will actually take you to the secret exit, so... There it is. All right. And I believe this uh, exit will take us all the way to 2-6, so... Eh, you get to skip essentially two levels. The tower and the next level after that, 2-5, but... Eh, that's not too bad. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to this mushroom house, too, just to get a different power-up. Because I really don't want to be mini Mario for too long. Although it is always nice to keep a mini Mario power up near you because there is actually a pretty big requirement that involves mini Mario that I'll be going over a little later. But, um, yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and do this mushroom house too. So, yeah, I don't know what happened to my save data. I guess I just didn't really save or something. I don't know. Or it saved too far and it didn't have the video. Something like that. All I knew is I actually got my uh, laptop, this new laptop, and I have all the data from my old computer on it, but this video's content was completely missing, and I have no idea where the hell it was, so I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to have to start a new game, so I decided to start a new game from the very beginning just to get back to this point, and, well, here we are. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and move on to the next level, 2-5. I believe this level is kind of a callback to uh, Super Mario Bros. 3. Because, as you can see, there is this question mark block over there that's not actually moving. That is because there is an enemy in here, and it's kind of a callback to those enemies in uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 that were hiding inside of the brick blocks, I guess. Unfortunately, though, their shoes can kill you, but, oh well, I didn't want to be Mini Mario anymore anyway, so it's actually kind of good that I died, I suppose. That way I can get a blue shell, okay. Let's take the blue shell, then. Uh, you can kill these guys pretty easily, though, just by ground pounding them, and they do give off power-ups, so you can grab those. Unfortunately, the uh, blue shell power-up trumps the fire flower, so... Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get anything from the um, blocks when we do find something. Okay, well, let me do this. Let me get rid of... Actually, I can't get rid of them. Okay, never mind. Okay, can you please go this way? Ah! Dang it, can I get him to come up here? Seriously, I thought you could make these guys move over if you move them in just the right way. Or I don't know, maybe this guy's just way too scared. <sighs> oh, shoot. Okay, well, I'm going to have to come back and get this power up later, or this uh, star coin later. That's okay. Actually, wait, let me see if he actually moved over. Oh, okay. 
Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Come on. Jump. Jump. There we go. Okay. Whew. That was kind of annoying, I have to admit. But I'm glad I was able to grab that. And now I have to frickin' manipulate the blue shell. Oh, sweet! I actually killed the... Whoo, that was close. But yeah, I actually killed the fire snakes, which is gonna make this next part a lot easier, because... As you can see, we have a P-switch up here. And we need to use these guys again to actually... Come on, jump, jump. There we go. Then we go over here to give the second star coin. Don't think we'll have to... Dang it. <laughs> okay, that was kind of stupid. I'm gonna have to grab that star coin again now, unfortunately. But yeah, uh, as I was trying to say, there's not gonna be any more secret exits for the rest of this world, so... We don't have to worry about that, thank god. And thankfully that was pretty easy to get. Oh god, that was close. Okay, watch out for Mr. Boomerang Bro right here. The last star coin is actually hidden pretty well if you can't uh, figure this out. But there is actually a secret right there. This will take you down here to this little room. And we have another one of these guys. And naturally... Oh, dang it. Let's try this again. No, don't kill yourself. Shh. Thank you. Jump! Okay, there. Alright. Now we can actually finish up. Because the ending is right here. I'm surprised that didn't give me a 1-up, though. I thought if you touched the very top of the flagpole, you get a 1-up, but I guess I wasn't technically over the flagpole at that point. Maybe like a small pixel difference or something. But yeah, let's go ahead and activate the star coin. So we can grab this power-up house. One thing that's really nice, though, is with this uh, new laptop, it looks like the speed of this game is actually moving a lot more normally than it should be. It doesn't really seem to be any lag anymore, which is a good thing, because I was really struggling with trying to fix that problem. But my hardware seems to work just fine on this new computer, which is great. For those wondering, I, I still have a laptop. I was trying to get a desktop, but... I still don't have enough room for a desktop, but thankfully this laptop, because it was a replacement for, you know, the laptop I had prior to this, I was actually able to get it for free. I mean, there was a few little fees here and there for, you know, different things, but for the most part, the machine itself was free. I only had to spend, like, about 100 or 200 bucks, and that's honestly not bad for a machine that's actually p more powerful than the original laptop I had, which was about almost 2,000 bucks, if, if anything, so I actually lucked out pretty well in that deal. But yeah, it's okay. It's a lot more powerful. It seems to be running fine, and I also just, in general, like it a lot more. <laughs> How did I miss that? Oh, well, whatever. Uh, I wanted to go back and grab that star coin anyway. But yeah, I'm really liking the new laptop for those who are wondering about it. Because I know I kind of talked about it a bit in uh, another video. <gasps> or rather, in my update videos, anyway. And if not my update videos, it was on Facebook, which... Hmm, wherever I said it, 
you know, I've kind of talked about it briefly. Haven't really gone into too much detail yet, though. But yeah, I'm really happy to get back into this game because this was one of the few projects that I was, like, really excited to get started with just because it was my first DS Let's Play. But then that whole computer issue kind of put a damper on that. Which kind of sucks, but... Hey, it's, it's, it's cool now. I really don't like these stupid piranha plants trying to have their way with me. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, there we go. We got rid of them. Why do you guys hate me? What did I ever do to you? Oh, God. Big Mama. Do not like the Big Mama. I'm just going to walk off onto this platform. Say goodbye to my plant friends. Grab the last star coin and... Hey, we're ready to move on to the castle, so... Hooray for that. Also, this is a pretty unique ending. We have a piranha plant corking the pipe. And we have to get him out of there. You don't see that very often. There we go, two sixes completed. And now we're gonna go on to the last level of World 2, which is the castle. And it's actually a very special castle too, because I wanna call attention to the map on the bottom screen again. As you can see from here, there are actually two paths we can go from World 2. We can go to World 3 or World 4. And that doesn't depend on a secret exit or anything. That actually depends whether or not you finish this stage as Mini Mario or not. If you finish the stage with Mini Mario, you'll go to World 4. If you finish it with any other form, you'll go to World 3. So what we have to do is we have to find a Mini Mushroom in this level. And then we simply just have to beat the level as Mini Mario, which uh, seems like it's actually a pretty hard feat, but really it's not if you think about it. Or, although I guess you guys who haven't played this game can't really think about it, but, um... I don't know, I think the way that you actually unlock it's pretty unique, and... I don't think it's as challenging as the game kind of tries to make it. But I'll get into that later, because... Naturally, we'll have to, um... Fight the boss as Mini Mario, and sorry for my yawning right there. Like the last video, I'm, I'm playing this, uh are recording this video pretty late in the evening. I think it's kind of weird to actually hear the castle music outside. I was kind of expecting the desert music to play again. But right here, you can actually find the mini mushroom, so we're going to go ahead and try to do the quote-unquote secret exit first. If you can even call it that. <laughs> Sorry again for the yawning, my god. But here's the boss door. Bowser Jr. again, but he's going to go ahead and run away. And here we have the World 2 boss, Mummy Pokey. So basically what you have to do is, because Mini Mario can't actually hurt the guy by normal jumps, you actually have to ground pound his head. And, you know, in some cases Mini Mario can't actually jump up there, so you have to use his wall jumps to actually uh, get on top of him. And dang it, I died. I wasn't expecting to die right there. The one challenge is making sure that you're right above him before you ground pound. Because if you kind of like miss him just by a little bit, 
there's a good chance you're probably going to die just because of his hitbox. He might move forward with before you have any time to react, and that way you're just, you know, kind of screwed at that point. When I was younger, I thought it was really difficult to actually, uh... Beat Mummy Pokey as Small Mario, but now it's not as bad, I don't think. It could be a lot worse. And thankfully, there's a mini mushroom right here, so you don't have to do the entire level again. I think in World 5, if you don't do it, you actually have to, like, start from the very beginning with a mini mushroom before you actually, uh, fight the boss, which is kind of annoying. Here, they at least give you some kind of grace period where if you fail, you can, you know, at least keep trying again and again. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, got him once. Okay, stop it. What? Okay, come on! That shouldn't have failed. That really, really shouldn't have failed. I was like right on top of him. I mean, I guess I can kind of see how I failed that, but... I don't know. I honestly thought I did that just fine. It's actually kind of funny because on my first attempt in my original recording, I actually beat him on the first try. And both times I had to fight him. Okay, take number three. Okay. Haha, <laughs> take that. Okay, so there we go. World 2 has been beaten. We beat a small Mario, so instead of following them to World 3. We're going to World 4. But, we have to beat the other exit too, and I am actually going to be going through the worlds in order, so... Let's go back to the castle and now unlock World 3. Okay, here we are back in the boss room. And since we kind of talked about how Mini Mario works against bosses... Uh, let's talk about a cheaper way you can actually kill the normal bosses with uh, any other form. Now, as you know, uh, Mini Mario had to ground pound, but if you ground pound with any other form of Mario, you can actually finish the boss in only two hits as opposed to three, which is really, really nice. But yeah, there we go. Boss beaten again, and this time we made access to World 3. So yeah, there we go. We are at World 3 now, and before we actually end the video, I think I am going to do the first level of this, because I think I actually did that level at the beginning, or no, at the end of this original video, you know, before I lost it. So let's go ahead and do this level 3-1. I think it's a very short one, too, so we're not going to spend too much time on this or anything. This is an underwater world, obviously, if you couldn't tell from the fish and everything else, basically. OK, 
Okay, this will give me a fire flower. And we have a random block. Now I'm going to keep the fire flower. Fire flower is pretty helpful in water levels. Plus, I think it's in general more helpful than uh, the uh, blue Koopa shell anyway. But inside this pipe right here, we have the first star coin and a mountain of other coins. And then right after that, we have the second star coin, along with the uh, big Bertha slash big bass of this game. So watch out for that blue fish, because that blue fish will try to eat you. Oh, I guess he's more purple than blue. Well, either way, he's trying to eat you, so be careful. And yeah, he's still chasing me, so let's go ahead and leave. So yeah, that was it for that level. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. This has been Slim Kirby. This has been Let's Play New Super Mario Bros. I will see you guys next time for more of World 3. Later, folks.